This one is 3.5. Here we have a simply supported beam and which has two point loads at the center. So in this case, we are going to require three cuts here. So this is your cut number one. This is your cut number two and this is your cut number three. There will be reactions at this point and this point. And since it's a symmetric beam, these reactions are going to be P and P in this case. So let's analyze your cut number one here. So for cut number one, it will be easy for us to analyze the left part. So if I draw that, I have a force P because of reaction here. And since we have a positive phase opening up, so we are going to have your bending moment and shear force acting in this manner. Now if I look at your cut 2 here, for cut 2 again we can analyze up to this point. So we are going to have this reaction force P, another force P acting at a distance of A from here and we are going to have these unknown shear force and bending moment because again this is a positive phase so they are acting in this manner and both of these cases the distance from the left end is always x so this is x from here to here and in this case this is x here okay now let's look at your cut number three so for cut number three it's easy for us to analyze the right part so let me draw it on this side here so in this case we have this force because of r2 which is p and since it's a negative phase so your v3 and mv3 is going to be pointing in this manner now the distance in this case because from the left end to this point right here is x so it needs to be l minus x right here so this is l minus x so let's look at your cut one from cut one we can see v1 plus p is equals to zero so v1 comes out as minus p and your mv1 if i take movement about this point is going to be equals to p times x now analyzing the second cut, we can see that this P and this P will cancel out. So your V2 is equals to 0 in this case. If I take movement about this point, so your MB2 is going to balance this movement minus movement because of the center force. We have PX minus P times, now the total distance is X here. This is A, so this distance here is going to be X minus A. So now this PX and PX cancels out. So your MB2 value is equals to P times A. Now in cut 3, we can see that your V3 is balancing your force P there, so directly in that. So your MB3, if I take movement about this point right here, it's going to be P times L minus X. So now we have got these values, so let's try and plot them in these different segments. So your cut 1 is going to be here cut 2 is going to be here and cut 3 is going to be here so this is my axis for shear force so v1 value is minus p so it goes in this manner the v2 value is 0 so we follow this line and then again p3 value is plus p so we can draw it in this manner right here so this one is minus p here this is plus p if i highlight the boundary of this curve this is how your shear force diagram looks there similarly we can plot the bending moment here so if i draw an axis here for the bending moment now your m1 value is px which is valid from 0 to a so from here to here we can evaluate this at x equal to 0 and a so at 0 we get 0 at a we get pa so this value right here is pa so i can draw this line right here so this is the first part in the second part we have value PA maintained so in cut 2 we are going to have this horizontal segment it looks like this and in the last case we have this we can again evaluate this at two points one is this one right here which is x equals to a plus b and x equals to l at x equals to l this value will be 0 and since a plus b so l minus a plus b is equals to a so this again gives you PA so this value is matching this right here and it needs to end with 0 so we can connect this in this manner so that's how your last segment is again we can highlight the boundary here so that's how your bending moment diagram looks this way now this was a simple problem i have demonstrated the cut method here but you can again follow the basket method in that basket method we will 
start counting all the positive forces and we'll walk on this beam from the right hand side in this manner so if i reach this point i see that there is a positive force p available here so i take that force so i maintain this p value till i reach this point that's how your shear force is plus p on this point in this region once i reach this point i get another force p which is in the negative direction so this positive p and this negative p cancel each other so that's how we maintain a value of zero in this segment and this is going to be true till i reach this point again at this point i get another force which is p in the negative direction so total force is going to be minus p here so we maintain this minus p till i reach this end right here so this is going to be minus p right here so again we can mark the boundaries for this curve so this is your shear force diagram similarly for the bending moment diagram we can look at the area under the curve so when i am looking at this your area is increasing in the positive direction so you are going to follow a straight line in this manner because the area is increasing by the time you reach here we are going to cover the total area a times the side p so this area at this point is going to be pa so that's how we get this part now here because your shear force is zero you are not going to get any more area but you still have this pa so you are going to maintain this pa value right here so in this segment you have a constant bending moment after that you start getting this negative area here so you are going to start reducing in terms of area that's why we are going down so this pa will be completely negated once we cover this distance a on this side that's how you can plot your bending moment diagram for this so i have given you both cut method as well as your basket method in this case for simple problems where you have only point loads available then it's easy for us to do this by basket method.